we are lucky enough to have that self-proclaimed water whiz with us now, joining us to talk about how she's helping the waves of future generations. Shreya, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. And the timing is perfect. Happy Diwali, where we're celebrating good over evil. You represent the good, Shreya. <laughs> thank you so much, and happy Diwali to all of those who are celebrating today. All right. Well, as President Biden and other world leaders met at the COP26 summit in Glasgow earlier this week, you were in home in California paying very close attention to how this was un all unfolding. What did you think of the conference and what change are you hoping to see? Did it give you any, uh, any hope to what you heard? Yes, I definitely do have a lot of optimism for COP26. But I also want to stress that world leaders need to take this seriously. This is one of the last opportunities that we have to come together as an international community and really set into action goals that can help um, prevent our planet from suffering from really high degrees of warming. And it's just an opportunity for us to have a sustainable, livable planet for the future. So I want world leaders to think about mitigation as well as resilience. So it's important, of course, to think about how we can reduce greenhouse gases and make sure that we're limiting warming. But I also want world leaders to understand that communities around the world are suffering due to the effects of climate change right now. And we need to support those communities that are the most vulnerable and being affected by things like fires, droughts, flooding, we have to make sure that we're ready and ready to take on the future. Shreya, I'm struck. One of your messages uh, to, to all of us is really to look around and see the effects uh, of climate change on our communities. In fact, I was reading an interview you gave. You said you were shocked. You were in rural California once in a community that literally had no water, none, not in wells, not anywhere. And it just appalled you that that happens in the United States. What, what's your message to all of us on taking clean water for granted? And, and, and why is reusing water, gray water, so, so critical to the solution? Yes, I think a lot of people don't understand what a critical resource water is because you turn on the tap and it's just right there. You don't think twice about how it got to your home or how you're using the water and how you're a part of the water cycle. And I think a huge amount of change can be affected if you just take a moment and think about how you're using water in your home. Can you find a way to reuse gray water? Can you maybe put in low flow toilets, faucets or shower heads? Every single action that you take makes an impact. And I want to make sure that everyone remembers that. You're never and, and, powerless. And you founded a nonprofit organization a few years ago with that name, The Gray Water Project. Um, folks can find out more about it online, but just tell everybody in a nutshell real quick, what is gray water? We heard it in Amy's piece, but remind us what that is. Yes, gray water is any water in your home that's been used once and can be used again. And it's water from sinks, showers, um, baths, laundries, and in an average American household, it can make up up to 60% of the used water in your home. So gray water reuse can be an incredible water conservation solution. All right, so Shreya, give us some advice, practical steps. What can Devin and I do as soon as we go home? <laughs> well, actually, on the Gray Water Project is running gray water challenges as well as water conservation challenges. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can start reusing gray water and get more involved, um, I'd encourage you to visit the Gray Water Project site, which is thegraywaterproject.org. That's gray with an E. And you'll find resources to um, install gray water systems and just tips and tricks for how you can make a difference. All right, we've got uh, tips and tricks. Devin. We've got we've some work to do, Kira. Do. Those yes. long showers aren't going to fly anymore. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it. I really respect it, at your age how much you care uh, just for our planet. And, and I can only hope, you know, that my kids are passionate as well about this. So what's next on your agenda? My goal is for gray water reuse to be just as common as paper or plastic recycling, just something that everyone knows how to do and something that's widespread across the world, because it's really a solution that can be implemented everywhere. Um, and of course, for me, I'm a student at Stanford, so studying and getting a degree are also on that to-do list. 
Well, on behalf of all ocean lovers out there, we, are, we love our oceans and our vacations and appreciate and respect it so much. Thank you so much, Shreya, for all your time and all your efforts. Pretty amazing. Thanks, Shreya. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.